Control Net 1.1 just launched and it's huge. They added in five new models, updated all the pre-existing models to be way better and is overall improved. You don't want to miss this. Okay, so in case you don't know what control net is, it's a way of adding additional control when you're generating images using stable diffusion. First one I'm going to show here, this is a new one that is just added in 1.1. If you're familiar with Instruct Pix the Pix, you should already know what this is. It essentially changes the prompting style and edits the image in a different way. Instead of saying dog or cat, if you want to get an image of a dog or cat, you say make a dog or make a cat, something like that. You understand? Like you're giving an instruction. And what they added here, the ability to do that, but with control net. Instruct Pick the pick is a dedicated model, meaning that you can only use it with the model that Microsoft, the people who made Instruct Picks the Picks, made. With this, you can use Instruct Picks the Picks with any model, which is by itself would be a huge thing. By the way, this is not this is not integrated into automatic 11111 or any other stable diffusion repo or anything. So I'm using this directly from the control net repo. This is why this is not a video on how to install this. Let's say I wanted to say winter or something like that. Instead, what you do with Instruct Picks the Picks is you say maybe it winter. That's how you have to format your prompt. You're essentially giving an instruction. If you look at this, you look at the generated image, you can see what happens here. It basically takes the image and it adjusts it in such a way as to make the image look like a winter image. It's not the same as image to image if you use that because that would change the image more. This is more kind of like just warping the image to make it look like if it's a winter image. You understand? Traditionally, you'd have to use Microsoft's model, but with this, you can use this with any model. It's really insane. So I'm going to do another image here and I will say make it on fire. I know that sounds weird, but that's kind of the prompting style you have to use. Imagine you're talking to a model as if it's your friend. Make it on fire. That's a normal sentence you'd say to a friend, no? Oh my god. <laughs> You see what's going on there, right? It takes your image. It just changes the part of the image that are necessary to make the image look like it's on fire. Traditionally, would only be able to apply this, a dedicated model. But now you can do this with any model. And that's the third time I said that. And you're probably tired by now. I'm sorry. The next one I have here works with the poses of the image. This was already in Control Net 1.0. But with this version, it's gotten better. They've added the ability to work with hands and the ability to work with faces. Technically, you could already work with hands in the older version. Main thing is, it wasn't properly supported and didn't work as that well so this version is dedicated and will actually work properly and they also added in the face so let me show you how that works with the image with this thing here okay so the model i'm using is an anime model by the way so this is going to make the images look anime you can see what it's doing you get this generation where it has the face of the person and it uses that to warp the image it has the arms of them it uses that to warp the image and then it has the hand and if you look at that hand that is a perfect hand guys and if you're familiar with stable diffusion you know that it doesn't do hands that well so i'm going to try it with this one. So planking is why I'll probably put your MO in planking. Yeah, that sounds good enough right there. And you can see in this one as well, where the face is there. So she has the face, the arms are there, the hands are there. Traditionally, this would be a lot more difficult to do. Adopts the same pose, except as an anime person. Another one that they added was line art. Essentially, it can take this image that's just a line drawing and fill it out with, well, I should just show you. You can see here, it takes the image and it fills in the gap. I obviously didn't add any description other than just sitting to the thing but you can say like what red shirt red here too now you can see what it does it takes the image it takes the line art fills it out gives her a red shirt gives her red hair okay so this one is another one that they also added this is really interesting essentially with stable diffusion you can use it to upscale images by breaking the image up and then just running image to image on each of the sections of the image because stable diffusion can take an image and just add detail to it that's basically what an upscaler does anyway i actually talk about that in my last video where I talk about AI image detection. Because Stable Diffusion can just add data to the image and stuff, it can effectively work as an upscaler. One of the problems is though, the prompt that you put in applies to your entire image. So that means that if you have a prompt that says a woman in a red dress and you want to upscale that image, how it works is it takes the image, puts it into block and it applies the prompt to each block. Hopefully that isn't confusing. The problem is a woman in a red shirt might describe the entire image, but it might not describe this corner or this patch or this patch or ditch patch. You understand? That might be like, like wall or tree or whatever. What they have here is they have a model that is trained to accept. It decides what the prompt should be. Not exactly, but it adjusts the thing so it works on each path separately. Okay, this is going to seem confusing. But what I'm going to put here, I'll put like what? Dog or something. I don't know. I'll put dog face. No, let's just say dog hand. I know this is confusing because I put prompt dog hand. <laughs> that might not make any sense, right? But the point is the image, you can see how this image is an upscaled version of the image. What I should do if I wanted to do that was put like woman 
face or something. You understand? But the image was able to realize that that doesn't make any sense with what it is that it received. But because of how this prompts, it effectively ignored that. How this is supposed to work is it that it's supposed to automatically split the image into chunks and it will do that on each section of your image. But with how this is now, it doesn't do that because it, this is an experimental version and you have to select a section yourself, which doesn't exactly make any sense. But the point I wanted to show was this clearly does not look like a dog hand, but instead it just looks like an upscaled version of this part of the image, which shows that it has the ability to ignore your prompt for something that's better based on the section that it's looking at. Hopefully that wasn't confusing. If it was, I I do have a video I talk about control net in general. Maybe that would help in understanding like how this works in general and stuff. But yeah. Okay, this one shuffle is probably the most confusing one. It's actually similar to in painting if you know in painting from stable diffusion. Um, but basically this takes the image and rearranges it. So let me show you what this does here. I just have the prompt here, one girl. Anyway, you can see what the image that it generates ultimately ends up looking like. It looks similar to this image, but it, it's obviously very different. This is probably the most confusing confusing one and to be honest I don't actually understand why you would want to use this because it's similar to image to image and how it works whereas most of the control net stuff actually is deviates from that I'm not 100% sure on this but you can see it looks similar to the image but different which is kind of how image to image works so I don't exactly understand what the point of this is but I just want to show all the new features and this is one that they added so there you go another one that they added was in painting which isn't too interesting because you could already do in painting here thing with stable diffusion but the important part is this should be better than the traditional in painting that's there right and also another thing apparently you can also use this with an optical flow thing which if you don't know what that is basically it means you can use this with videos that's not in as yet but this is really interesting for using this to generate videos and stuff especially considering the video i made about tiktok diffusion before so yeah the video part isn't in as yet but the in painting part is so i'm just going to show you this here essentially what in painting does is that it blocks out part of the image and replaces it with whatever prompt it is that you put in. You can already do in painting with regular stable diffusion, but there are some issues with it and conforming to the shape of the image. It would be better if you use the in painting checkpoint that exists, right? There's a special in painting checkpoint thing that's better. But the problem with that is, is that again, you're lim it's very similar to the instruct picks the picks thing. We are limited to one model, which is just not very viable with something like Stable Fusion, where there's so many different models and stuff that you can use. So this, again, allows for you to do this with every model. So that's more the advantage of this sort of thing. And like, yeah, remember, this is the anime model that I'm using here. So don't forget that. So it's not going to look like a real one. But you can see here what this does to the image, right? It gives you like an Emma Watson image and it fills in the space that I cut out. This is just for people who don't know what in painting is. The space that I cut out gets replaced with the person's face. You understand? And you can use this with any model. You can use this with any model. Again, technically you can already do in painting, but the idea is, is that this should be, this should be a better version of in painting that was only available one model before, but now it applies to every model. And that's really what's there. Also, if you are familiar with control net, the 1.0 versions, all of the control net 1.0 versions, all of them got updated and they should all be better now. If you want to see stuff about that, you can check my video about control net that I made here. With this video, I just wanted to cover the new stuff. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching the video. If you like the video, make sure to subscribe, check out the other videos and yeah.